In this video, we will show you how to build a function to fetch data chunks from voice flow knowledge base and send them to Gemini Pro to return an optimized response. Based on the voice flow example function, get knowledge base chunks, we will create a function to let Gemini Pro model use the chunks data and return an optimized answer to the user's question according to the prompt we send. This function can be downloaded and exported to be used in other projects, which will be very convenient. Let us go to the demo chat bot we built in the previous video. In this chat bot, we use an API block to send data to Gemini Pro model, and we extract the Gemini answer from the optimized response. We also use a function block to fetch data chunks from the knowledge base. Here is our knowledge base, which contains three web pages URL from a gym website. Voice Flow has already pulled the data from these web pages and saved them as chunks according to their similarity. We use the example function from Voice Flow, which returns the related data chunks based on the user's question. Gemini Pro model, just like other AI models, can analyze the similarity of the question vector and the chunk vectors and provide the optimized answers in their response. Based on this chatbot, we will create a function to perform the exact tasks, which has increased portability and flexibility. On the left icons, let us click the content. We can see the function, get knowledge base chunks, which is provided by voice flow. Let us click the function to see details. We can see two input arguments. We have done a very minor change in the code line 48. We have deleted all other parameters from the complex data structure. Instead, we have entered content and map it out to the clean data chunks. We will then show you how to add code to send the data chunks to make API call to Gemini and get its response. This function returns the chunks and also can catch errors if there are any. On the right, it shows two input variables, the API key and the user's question, which are required by the function. The output variable is the clean chunks, which are returned by the function. Based on this function, we will extend it to make API calls to Gemini. Let us click the function and duplicate it. We can see a copy of the function has been generated. This one is exactly same as the original function. We will talk about the details later. Let us go back and select this function. We are going to give it a new name. Let us rename it as Voice Flow KB to Gemini Pro. Let us click on the function and do some modifications. In the argument of the function, we will need the user's question, the Voice Flow API key. Additionally, we will need the Gemini API key as well. Let us enter the variable's name, Gemini API key. Next, we are going to use a variable to store the chunk data. Previously, the chunk data has been returned. In this new function, we will store the chunk data in the variable KB chunks. We initialize the variable as an empty string. Let us expand this page to get a better view. The next part of the function is to define the API data, including the URL and question to make the API call. The API call is to fetch the data by sending the URL, post method, headers, and body with data in JSON format. The return data is saved in the response variable. The next part is to check errors and clean up the data to get what we need. The final part is to return our data and catch errors to show error message if there is any. The code to perform the API call will be used and modified later for the API call to Gemini Pro because the API calls are very similar. The entire code is highlighted. Next, let us quickly make a section to indicate the beginning of the Gemini API call. We make a copy of this part of code and paste it down here. Next, we will make modifications. We change this to Gemini URL and paste the Gemini Pro URL here. The last part of the URL is the API key. We have the Gemini API key in the argument passed to the function as a variable. We will use this Gemini API key variable and concatenate it with the URL. In the new line, we input the code with Gemini URL adding the Gemini API key at its end to form the entire URL. We make a change of this as it is no longer a constant variable. We change this name to Gemini data because this data will be sent to Gemini when making the API calls. We will also make a change of the data inside. Let us go back to the canvas. Click on the JavaScript block. We select the prompt and make a copy of it. Back to the function, we are going to paste the prompt under the Gemini URL and add let before the prompt because it is a new variable in this function. As shown in the previous video, we have concatenated the prompt and the chunks from the knowledge base, which will be together sent to the Gemini. Here, we are going to do the same thing. We add the KB chunks at the end of the prompt. The KB chunks variable has been defined in the beginning, which will store the data chunks. The chunks data can be obtained by making the API call. 
The URL, data, and the user question will be used in the API call. After fetching, the data is saved in the constant variable response, which contains all the related chunks from the knowledge base. Then, the chunks are extracted from the response, and further cleanup is performed to get clean chunks data. We are going to use the variable KB chunks to store the clean data. We comment out this line of code because we no longer need it. Since we have already saved the clean data, we can also comment out this line. The next step is to modify the Gemini data. Let us go to the canvas and click on the Gemini API block. In the body section, we make a copy of the code. We are going to use it to replace the original code. We select the entire code between the two curly braces and paste the code here to replace it. Next, we need to remove the quotation marks and curly braces of the variable question. We also need to remove the quotation marks and curly braces of the variable prompt. Next, we delete the question and instead enter the answer. Now, the Gemini data is good to go. In the API call, we change the response to Gemini response and URL to Gemini URL. In the headers, we only need the content type and we can delete the rest. In the body, we change the data to Gemini data. This Gemini data variable is from our previous definition in line 105. Next, we are going to change the response variable to Gemini response. Also, the variable in line 133. We add Gemini before the variable response body. We change this response to Gemini response as well. As we can see, after the API call, the Gemini response is saved in the variable Gemini response body, which is in JSON format. We are going to extract the answer from the variable Gemini response body. Let us go back to the canvas and click the Gemini API block. We can see the capture response using the data structure of the response and extract the answer and save it in the variable. We are going to do the same thing to extract the answer from Gemini. In our function, we are going to do the same thing to extract the answer from the Gemini response. Back to the function, we use the variable Gemini answer to save the answer extracted from the variable Gemini response body. We extract the data using the same data structure as that in the API block on the canvas. If you want to know the details, you may watch our previous videos. After extracting the answer, we do not need these lines of code, and we just can delete them. As we have saved the answer in the variable Gemini answer, we can return it as the output variable. We change the name of the variable to Gemini answer. In the debug trace message, we change it to Gemini answer received and change the variable to Gemini answer. In the catch clause, if there is any error, it will display the error message to let the user know and we can leave it unchanged. Let us go over the function one more time. In the beginning, we have the API data for the API call to fetch data chunks from the knowledge base. The clean chunks are returned in the old function. In our new function, the clean chunks are saved in a variable and we can delete this return part of code. The catch clause can catch errors, and we do not need to modify it. In our newly added code, we have the Gemini URL and API key, prompt, and Gemini data to send to Gemini. We make API calls to fetch response of the Gemini Pro model, and return the answer to the user. We also catch errors, and display the error messages if there is any. On the right column, we need to add a new input variable. We copy the name of the variable Gemini API key, and paste it in the input variable box. For the output variable, we are going to change the name to Gemini answer, which is finally returned by our function. We still have two paths, success and error. We are going to add the description of the function. We can delete the old one. The description is, this function fetches chunks from knowledge base according to the user's question and sends them to Gemini Pro to return optimized answer. You may also upload an image for this function. Next, let us run a test. We need to enter the Gemini API key and voice flow knowledge base API key. I have pasted the API keys here. And we are going to input the question. What classes do you provide? We click the execute button. We can see the status of success at the bottom. Next, we are going to add this function to the chat bot. Let us go back to the canvas. Let us make a copy of this function block and paste it on the canvas. For this function block, we select our new function voice flow KB to Gemini Pro. In the input variable mapping, we already have the VF API key and question. We are going to add Gemini API key as the new variable. For the output variable mapping, we add the variable answer. In the JavaScript block, we delete the prompt variable and add the Gemini API key variable and paste the key here. We connect the JavaScript block with our new function block and then connect the function block with the last text block. 
we can delete the old function block, the JavaScript block, and the Gemini API block. Now, let us click the Start button to run a test. We enter the question, what classes do you offer? The function fetches the chunks from the KB and returns the Gemini answer with a list of classes that the gym offers. Let us click the Continue button. This time, we ask, what can I learn from a cycle class? The Gemini returns the answer and lists the things we can learn from a cycle class. The answer is pretty good, which is accurate and optimized. Now let us click the button to end the conversation. In summary, we have shown you how to use a function block to add a function with input and output variables. We have built a function to fetch data chunks from the knowledge base and make API calls to Gemini Pro to get optimized answer. The functions are very useful. You can export and download the function and use it in other chatbot projects by importing the function. This gives high portability and flexibility. If you like this video, please subscribe and give a thumbs up. If you have any comments and suggestions, please let us know. Thank you for your support.